Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ming Shi Liu. I am a machine learning engineer from OpenSearch, uh, mainly focusing on OpenSearch core features, um, search processors, plugins, and ML Commons uh, plugins, which is uh, providing machine learning features to OpenSearch. Hi, everyone. I'm Oves Kazi. I'm a software engineer at OpenSearch as well. I work mostly on the flow framework and anomaly detection and some part of core as well. Yeah, so to start with the agenda, we'll first talk about like what is open search is. So open search is a fully distributed uh, search analytics tool which help you with various different features like anomaly detection, alerting, and neural search. So out of this neural search, we have lots of other features like uh, uh, multimodal search, semantic search, and conversation search. So on top of that, the, we'll pick up one of them, like conversion search, and uh, we'll uh, flat on this PPD with that. So this is the agenda which we'll be discussing today. First is introduction to RAG tool. Uh, Mingxi will talk about like what is a RAG and how does RAG tool is implemented in open search. Uh, what is the current ML setup for conversation search in open search right now? And then I'll talk about uh, introduction to Flow Framework. Flow Framework is a new plugin which we released in 2013. So I'll give a brief introduction about that. Uh, we'll show a live demo uh, and then a couple of additional sample use cases as well. Okay, to start, I want to know how many of you know what is RAG, which stands for Retrieval Argumented Generation. A lot of you guys know. It's, full, it's almost full house. So I don't, I just have to give it briefly. Um, so you can see from this triangle, usually in the past old way, we just send one query to LLM and see, hey, is this model understand the question from its training data? So, but now with RAG2, we can send a query to your context. Basically in OpenSearch, it's from your documents. Like, do you, can you get the latest news or your latest information from the, uh, from the cluster to get the information? It serves as context so they can send to the LLM um, to uh, supplement to the knowledge base from its training data. So uh, why is REC so trending? It has certain benefits. It improved the quality of LLM that it's no longer limited by its training data. You can also provide it, uh, the latest information from its documents. And you can ensure the uh, documents uh, can be most recent and accurate. REC2 can also uh, list the source of your documents so that you can know why REC2 uh, come up with this answer. You can validate them. Maybe if I find out something is wrong, you can update your document to make uh, sure the answer from the LLM is more accurate. And uh, with this uh, REC approach, you can reduce the needs of training the models. You don't have to uh, train it every day so that it feeds the training data to the LLM every day. You can reduce the frequency so that you can save some computing resources and also um, requires less validation efforts. So then how uh, OpenSearch use uh, RAG? It's uh, one of the ways to do it is using RAG tool. We have um, agent framework, and you can use different tools in this agent framework to achieve the purposes. The use case that we are demoing today is you can use RAG tool. So uh, in the RAG tool, we provide two query methods uh, in the configuration. Uh, there are two queries. Uh, one is vector query. The other one is sparse uh, vector query. Um, so vector query usually use um, dense vector models, um, and sparse vector query use uh, sparse encoding models. I'm not sure um, if you guys know the difference between the two. Do you need any explanations? Raise your hands if you know the differences. Oh, not bad, 50%. So vector, um, vector queries usually use a dense vector model that's also trending that it will convert the test into vectors. Like if you have a two dimension diagrams, you will convert the test into vectors and it measure the distance between the vectors so that you can get the rankings, like which vectors uh, is more related to your search test. Uh, but sparse um, vectors query usually will do uh, different ways that uh, the sparse encoder model will um, do the, um, for if you have, um, searching for happy and I have a document, I am glad, it will, um, it will generate um, a list of vocabulary for I am glad and happy might be one of the vocabulary that have high score. So even though you're searching for happy in the document, I am glad, you also get a match because happy is in the list of vocabulary and you're probably getting a really high score. So even though it's not exact match, uh, sparse encoder, uh, encoder model will generate the semantic way of uh, generating similar vocabulary that you can use it for searching. 
So um, if you're using vector queries, um, it's known as um, neural search. If you're using sparse uh, vector query, it's also known as uh, neural sparse search in open search. So once uh, you configure the query method, you can choose one of those um, to achieve the purposes, then it will uh, send it to the LLMs um, uh, for the documents that retrieve from the query. Um, you can do the POM engineering. Um, the, in the demo that we're showcasing today, we were going to ask the LLM to say, you're a data analyst. And based on the context from the document, um, you can summarize the answer. So it not only um, answer question based on your training data, it will also um, summarize the answer based on the information retrieved from your context. So um, in the current ML comments, plugins, and open search, how to set up this uh, conversational search agent? Um, thinking about you need to have, let's say you, do, you want to do vector search, you need to have an embedding model first. So how to connect the embedding model with open search? You need a connector. So you want to create a connector, let's say uh, SageMaker, you have the model in SageMaker, or you have the model with Cohere. You create the connectors, connect these two services, then you can use a connector ID to register the embedding model in your cluster locally. Um, uh, or in other ways, but uh, you can use this embedding model uh, with the ingest pipeline. So when you um, bundle the index with the ingest pipeline, uh, when you update the document, the embedding is coming along with the document uh, at the same time. Then when you have this KNN index and using the pipeline to upload it the index, you have the context that you can use it for uh, to feed to your LLM. So then we use a um, agent framework. In one of the example is you can create a flow agent using Rack Tool. But in agent framework, we can also do conversational flow agent bundle with other tools. Uh, we have a, a list of the tools options in ML Commons. You can uh, look into the tutorials on GitHub. Then you might find out uh, different tools in your agent framework to serve different uh, use cases. Uh, thanks, Mingxi, for explaining the RAG in open search. Now, you've seen in the previous slide like how complex the whole setup can be for setting up conversation search in open search, right? So to solve that problem, we brought up this new plugin called as Flow Framework in open search, which is basically chaining off multiple open search APIs together. So all of the APIs are, let's say, uh, we create a template in Flow Framework with multiple nodes, and this is a DAG which is later be done like topological sorting on that DAG so that we uh, get the API output uh, in a chaining model, like one after the another. So for example, in the previous example, you saw create connector, which is, uh, which is one of the node here. So after creating a connector, you get a connector ID, which is passed to the registering model. That's another node. Then we create a pipeline where we pass all this input which we have received from the previous nodes. And then like that, we create an in index as well. So this is uh, the basic explanation of Flow Framework is. Uh, to simplify that, like uh, Flow Framework tries to sim stream, uh, streamline all the conversion process for setting up multiple ML things, uh, use cases of open search like conversion search, semantic search, hybrid search, uh, and uh, multi-model search as well. So how we do it? So ML Common right now has a ML client, which is our transport client, which provides us with multiple APIs through which we can use that client to register them one on another, one after another. And we combine those APIs together, and later on we expose just one API on Flow Framework. So all the setup, complex setup which we have seen, can be done using just one click. That's it. And the whole setup will be done for you. Uh, for that, we provide some automated templates. Uh, I'll show some templates in the, uh, at the end of the presentation as well. And uh, Flow Framework also tries to remove the complexity of calling multiple APIs. So let's say if you're calling a create connector API, you will, create, you will get a connector ID out of it, then you'll pass it to register model, then you'll get a model ID out of it, then you'll use that model ID to create a pipeline and all this kind of thing. So you don't have to wait for any, uh, any more for that. Flow Framework will take it. Now, moving on to the demo. Yes, uh, this is the live demo that we are going to showcase. We built up a 2.13 versions of open search locally. Um, this is the dashboard that we are going to showcase. Uh, now, we are creating a query and answer agents together. Uh, first of all, we need to set up the clusters. Um, 
and now we want to use Amazon bedrock models for these examples. Um, I don't know if you guys talk, hear about Titan embedding models. This is the one that I'm going to demo um, using vector search. So we, uh, in, when we create a connector, this is the one that I'm using um, AWS SIG4. Um, you can use the exact, uh, exact API to create the uh, connectors, but I only must assess token and in this embedding models, it's expecting an input test. And we are using pre and post functions to, um, so that it matched uh, the model input format and output format. So uh, well, after we have the connector ID, let's say this, uh, let's check out this connector ID that I created for um, bedrock uh, embedding models. This is the Titan embedding model that I, I'm going to use it to connect to. So I save this connector ID and pass to the register model API. And this is the models that I register for this demo. So you can see it's a remote model. Let's try to test. Um, this model is expecting an input test field. I'm just using hello world and see how this embedding model work. Okay, we have one prediction now. So it looks like uh, this is a sentence embedding model. We are getting a a list of embedding in the shape of 1,000 of 24. It looks pretty nice, so I'm going to use this test embedding model to ingest my document. So when I, once I have the document, I have an embedding along with it. So uh, let's use this test embedding model ID uh, in the ingest pipeline. In this document, I'm going to have a field called passage test. So this is the containing the text information in it. And then once I have the embedding, I want to store it into passenger embedding field. Let's uh, look at this document. I'm using the ingest pipeline. I'm setting this passenger embedding field as a KNM vector. As we just see, uh, it's going to be in the shape of 1024. Uh, make sure the index setting is proper so that it matches the dimension. Uh, then when we are doing bulk ingestion for the documents, so I'm using the document from today's information. For Berlin Buzz for 2024, I have a couple documents about what is Berlin Bud's work and the locations and dates. Um, you can check out the document that I uploaded. You can see the passage embedding fields is generated. We have the list of embedding for the vectors and we can have the test. So these two fields are already created when I uploaded the document. If you're uh, familiar with OpenSearch, uh, this is the same APIs that you uh, uploaded the documents in the bulk ingestion mode. So now uh, we have embedding models with the vectors, and we also have the index. Then thinking about using Recto, what else we need? We need the LLM model. So uh, in this demo, I'm going to use a cloudy model. Uh, similarly, we need the connectors. We connect cloudy um, using its URLs and also using the same uh, protocols, uh, AWS SIG4. In this model inputs, it's, not, uh, it's required to have a prompt and the model is expecting to have a temperature and entropic versions. We can set up the default parameters in the connectors so that once I um, use a predict API, I don't have to put on all the parameters. For example, um, using this connector ID, I register the model ID, this one. Um, I only put on the prompt to use the examples that you are a data analyst. So LLM, you should answer my question based on the given context first. If there's something latest from the document, I want you to prioritize the latest context. If um, the answer is not showing in the context, you will analyze from your knowledge base, from your training data. And then if, if you don't know the answer from these two methods, you just say, I don't know. So let's try see how Cloudy can answer this question. What is buzz, uh, Berlin buzzword 2024? This is a live predict. Okay, the cloudy model doesn't have enough context. It from the training data, um, from the training data, it doesn't know uh, what is Berlin buzzword 2024. And in this model, I didn't fit in. I, I didn't fit in the context first. So um, either from its context or its um, knowledge base, it doesn't know what is Berlin Buds. So let's use a rack to, to solve this question. Um, I'm using the same embedding model ID, the Titan embedding model ID, and the cloudy model ID. 
that I'm going to pass on. And this is the um, index I created with Berlin Buzzwords information in it. And the field that has the embedding is passing uh, embedding field. And I'm using neural query type, the vector query type. And using the same prompt. Let's see, I, I created this agent. And I'm going to ask the same question again using this REC agent. What is Berlin Buzzword 2024? Okay, nice. In the response, it's saying based on the context, it's not from the knowledge base, you can tell it's from the context from the document, that Berlin Buzzword is German's most exciting conference on storing, processing, streaming, and searching large amounts of digital data with a focus on open source uh, software projects. It looks pretty nicely. It not, not only gives us an answer, it also summarizes based on my, um, my prompt, uh, uh, requirements, I ask it to summarize the answer. It also gives us accurate information and it tells us this is based on the context, not based on its training data. And in this way, um, we created a rec to that, it created a rec to that uh, it can um, so supplement its training data to give you answers. So this is one of the examples I'm uh, showcasing using rec tool um, in an Airflow framework agent but you can also uh, configure using conversational flow agent. You just have to change um, the configuration in the type, then it will give you um, the memory ID and the, um, and the message ID that you can carry on the information. Like I can ask follow-up questions in the conversation and you can make it a chat history. And you can also uh, look at the message ID for debugging and tracing. Um, this is the examples that um, I'm going to use for the Q&A agents. Um, Oasis will talk about the full framework demo. Hi. So, yeah, as we have seen, like, the bit more and more AI applications come into the picture. The whole setup for conversion search or any other ML use case of open search can get very complex. So we try to minimize that with just one click in Flow Framework. So let me uh, explain that using Flow Framework. So whatever we've seen right now, which Minchi has explained, like creating two different connectors, one for embedding, one for inference, and then uh, registering both the connectors and models, and then after that, uh, creating the rack tool and the agent as well. So the whole setup uh, will do the same thing, but now using Flow Framework. So Flow Framework has a bunch of use cases which we are supporting right now. So one of them which I'm going to use is conversion search with Bedrock rack tool. Uh, so it has a bunch of uh, access key, secret key, and session token. This we need to provide because these are unique in nature and can be added default for that. But in the template, if you see here, the template looks like something very similar to which Minchi has explained. But values can be either default or they can be overridden when passed through the request payload. And this is the whole template which we have just seen. And these are, this are the default values for those templates, like whatever we have seen right now. And if any value is provided in the API payload, those defaults will be substituted. So let's say we have a credential access key and secret key. That is what will be substituted when passed from here. So for now, I have already created a, a, a workflow. So when we run this above API, we get a workflow ID, and that workflow ID helps you to get the status of all the resources which have been created. Like if you see here, we have created a connector ID, the uh, uh, embedding uh, connector. We have also created a bedrock connector, which is an inference connector. We have registered both the connectors and their models. And then we have deployed that model. We have created rack tool with the root agent as well. We have created the ingest pipeline and create index. All everything through just one click. Now. We'll, we'll pick up the uh, model ID for the embedding model and see whether the predict is working as expected. Okay, see. So we can see like the embeddings are already there. It's very similar to what uh, Mingxi had before. And then I will try to execute the agent. And I'm asking kind of the same question like where is Berlin Buzzword 24 using the uh, agent which has a rack tool in it. Yeah, so uh, our agent has written us with the response as where is Berlin buzzword. Uh, it's in Germany and uh, the location as well. So everything we have done just through one click now. Uh, 
the whole use case. Now, the another thing which we have is like we also provide a deep provision API as well in the Flow framework, <laughs> where if I just use the same workflow ID out here and try to deprovision, all of the resources which we have created right now are deprovisioned. So if I try to use the same model ID here just to predict, it has already been deleted because it's not able to find the model. So everything has been deleted. So yeah, that was the demo. Now uh, moving back to the slides. Uh, we also had some recorded demo in case anything goes wrong in the live demo. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, these are the additional uh, default and sample use cases which we have on uh, Flow Framework. And with every release coming into the picture, we are adding more and more default use cases. But uh, right now we have the common use cases from where we get the ask. Or you can also create a GitHub issue on our repo to let us know like what kind of uh, default templates you require. And uh, yeah, in the future, we are currently in under the development for the front end as well for Flow Framework, where we'll provide a drag and drop UI using Vue. You can just pull in like ingest pipeline, you can pull in like search pipeline, uh, any kind of connector, and everything will be done. So it will be a totally low code, no code app platform for you to perform any ML use cases of open search. Yeah, that's all. Okay, th thank you. So we have plenty of time for questions. So, yes. <clears throat> Hello, thanks for your talk. I'm curious, is it possible to implement uh, own rack? I don't know, some with your ranker, with some other stuff on top. It's the first question. The second, is it possible to implement any other custom agent and in what language? So um, we, we have demoed using the basic design. It's having a flow framework, um, a, a fl um, agent framework that will have the root agents to do the task. And then within um, the tools, you, I demo using Rack 2. But there are other tools in our skills repo that you can check it out on GitHub. There we can have um, ML model tools that it actually can use any models. Like if you have a multi-language models that you can use it, you can uh, compile using this model ID. and. If this model had uh, know how to answer German questions, may, then you can use it for your uh, use cases. And if you find out um, ML model tool doesn't work for your case, you can feel free to contribute to skills report and use another tool. Uh, you can still use the same framework to serve the purposes. Um, the other way that I'm also thinking about, um, we have agent framework and the tools selection. You can also, I'm also thinking about uh, if you're only using for search, you may also think about using search processors. Uh, we have a ML inference ingest processors that you can uh, ingest a document with the models in on the same time, then you will have the model uh, prediction outcomes in the document. It's released on uh, 2.14 version. You can also try to check that out. Uh, can I bring my custom code as a tool that is used? Uh, in yeah, by of agent? course. We are open source, so you can check out a skill repo and try to contribute your new tools. And uh, maybe other people can also utilize your tools in, um, in building up their uh, AI applications. Okay, uh, I have a question uh, <laughs> uh, about the retrieval part of the RAG. Uh, because I, as an old school uh, search engineer, I like, uh, I like um, uh, lexical uh, search. And, and so in, in the, the, you presented two ways of, uh, of doing Cheering. the retrieval, so, but all a vector base, so either uh, with dense vectors or uh, plate-based encoding. Um, is it p possible at all to add in the retrieval part uh, a lexical uh, search? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. It's because nowadays, semantic search is very trending. That's why we have a uh, new sparse query and, um, and vector DB. So in the back end of Rack2, it's actually two tools. 
uh, bundling together. The first phase uh, is for the query part. So we have vector DB2 and Nero Sparse 2. Uh, you can check out on the skills report. They can use it separately. Um, you can bundle them using ML model too. Then it achieves the same purposes, uh, purposes as a REC tool. Um, in your case, you want to have a lexical search tool. Then it's a lot easier. You can just create a lexical search tool and use it. Uh, because flow agent runs sequentially, you have a lexical uh, search tool and then uh, you get the query using keyword search and use ML model to, to configure your LLM. Then now you have a Q&A answer agent uh, with a traditional searching way. Yeah, but the, the lexical search tool is um, not there in the repo yet, but feel free to contribute. I, it sounds like a fairly yeah. simple use, uh, coding. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the skills repo, we, uh, we actually have the agent framework where uh, we keep all the tools in the skills repo. So right now we are supporting some uh, common tools like uh, open such as PPL tool, PPL query. So we support PPL tool as well. We have anomaly detection, so we support anomaly tool as well. So like that, uh, the agent framework, what it does is like it sends whatever the context it has to the LLM to get the right set of tool and based on that, that tool is selected. So we might have some other use cases for which we don't have a tool right now, but we have feel free to open an issue and we'll add that. Okay, thank you. Any more question? Do not hesitate now, I will check online. No question online at the moment. So yeah, I hope from today's demo you can try to download OpenSearch 2.13 and try out building a Q&A agent by yourself. It's, it's open source, you can contribute your custom code and um, you can uh, try out your own document and see if it works for you. Thank you.